Good evening, everyone. We'd like to say welcome to Brian Missionary Baptist Church uh, Bible Study. Tonight, we will be coming from Matthew's the sixth chapter, around the 25th verse, and we'll go through the uh, 34th verse. We pray all is well with everyone. We pray God's uh, blessing and speed upon each and every one of you. So Matthew's the sixth chapter, uh, beginning at the 25th verse, will be our discussion for tonight. Uh, previously, we talked about uh, our food, clothing, and shelter. And uh, say good evening to all that are sharing with us by conference call as well as the uh, Facebook. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal and all wise God, we thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for this day to study thy word that we might feed our soul, the inward man, that our yearning for thee would yet be filled. We plead the blood of Jesus over every household that's represented in this study tonight. We pray thy blessing and thy comfort upon this city, our homes, our schools, our children, our children's children. We pray for the mayors, the governors, the leaders, the legislators, all the way from the poor house to the White House, that we would seek your face, that we might receive guidance and instruction. And it is our prayer tonight, Lord, that thou would feed us until we want no more. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. Amen. So tonight, what we amen. find, amen. amen. So tonight, what we find here is we have just got through uh, discussing that God has promised to provide our needs. He has promised food, clothing, and shelter, which are three needs. And he has said that even uh, the money we have, all of these things are temporary. So don't get caught up in uh, you becoming what the scripture says. It says the love of money, which equates to the lover of money, can become the root to your corruption, your crime, because you will focus uh, your attention, that will become where your treasure is and where your God is. So even in God providing for our needs, even in God supplying us with the homes we have, the cars, the children, the clothing, the food, the shelter, as well as money, uh, to spend, to replenish those needs. They, they are never meant to take the place of God. We are, God is still supposed to be a uh, priority in our lives, even though he provides those things. And he tells us that in his creation, that the birds, the fowls of the air, the lilies of the field, the flower, the grass. They don't go to work like you, like we do, or those who, who have been fortunate enough uh, to retire or whatever reason uh, you don't have to uh, go to work. Uh, those things are temporary. We are still supposed to depend on God who is still the source of everything. We are to still seek him and make him priority. But when these temporary things preoccupy our mind, our time, our energy, 
it will separate us. It will hinder us in seeking God, who is the source of all things. So tonight, we start with an interesting uh, word in the 25th chapter, I mean the 6th verse, and the 26th chapter, and the 25th verse. It starts with, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. What we find here is that when Jesus was tempted into the wilderness, in the wilderness, he went without food for 40 days. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And Satan knew he was hungry. He knew the flesh was in need. It was starving. And, and at his weakest point, Satan said, well, I'll tempt him with food. And that very first temptation, he said, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus replied, according to the scripture, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. So here's a situation the same with us. The Father knows that we have need of these things. And there are many people who are impoverished and the, ne and the necessity of these basic needs uh, seem hard to maintain and for some hard to receive. Jesus said that the poor you would have with you always. Now he was just not talking about uh, uh, physically. He was also talking spiritually. We, we can be physically wealthy, but spiritually poor. So Jesus is saying we miss the point by being anxious or overly concerned about our basic needs. And even if there's a lack in, in your life today of the basic necessities, the prescription and the answer is still to go to God, who is still the source and the supplier of everything that we need. And he says here in the uh, 26, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barn. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than them? So what, what is God saying here? He says, I'm aware of every creature that I created, their needs. I'm responsible because I'm the creator. I'm the originator. I'm the one that said, let there be. I'm the one that blew it, the breath of life in the man and he became a living soul. So God is saying to, to us, even though we may be lacking something, in need of something, or wanting something, 
or desiring something, he says, I know that you in need. And there are other scriptures that tell us we have not because we ask not. And so tonight, one of the crucial mental attitudes that's necessary to get through life is this, that being uh, filled with anxiety or worrying over these things are not necessary. And it says in the 27th verse, which of us, it says you, but to make it personal, which of us by taking thought can add one cubic unto his stature? Which one of us can say, I want to grow another inch. Which one of us, by worry, what are some things that worry causes? Or anxiety? Poor hell. It, it caused poor health. Any other. Anx anxiety can cause and worry. Now, if, if anybody is in lack or in need of some basic necessities, there are multiple ways to receive it. But first of all, go to God the Father and say, and just be honest and straight up with it because he already knows. So you don't have to be shameful to open up your refrigerator and say, Lord, there's nothing in my refrigerator. Or to go to your, uh, amen, uh, worry can cause depression. And uh, there's nothing wrong with going to your cabinet and opening it up and saying, Lord, I, you see, my cupboard is bad. There's nothing wrong with going to your closet and saying, Lord, I, uh, my raiments are few. He already knows. But because he knows, and our responsibility is to is to constantly talk and commune and have a personal relationship with him on a daily basis. He can either make it happen miraculously or he can touch somebody's heart and they bring you some food or some milk. There's a story that's told uh, of, of a gentleman that was riding around one night and he was told to go in the store and buy some milk. I don't need no milk. I don't even like milk. Why am I going in there buying milk? At the same time, there was a father praying because he had a young child and it was late at night that needed some milk. So the gentleman went in the store and bought the milk. Now, what am I, what am I going to do with it? The spirit led and guide, guided him to a certain area and community in that city. The spirit told him to stop. And after stopping, he looked because of the, the time of night it was. You know, everybody going to sleep. Nobody is, is up. And then you want me to go and knock on that door and give them some milk. And the father at the same time was praying that he would receive 
some milk for his child. So the young man followed and he knocked on the door and he says, and when, when, when the uh, man on the inside opened up, he said, I was, uh, the young man on the outside said, I was told to bring this milk to you. So at the same time that we are asking God for something, God can be preparing a way, preparing somebody's heart to meet the need. So we should constantly, no matter how well we, uh, how well we got it going on, we have, we, we, we have a home, our clothes, we have meat uh, in our cupboards, we have our, our honey and our own money, we still need God. Because all of those things are temporary. God is eternal. God is everlasting. He's from beginning to end. There's no ending to him. If he gives us something out and of himself, it does not diminish him. But if we get rid of get rid of a dress, give someone some food, or give someone uh, money from our resources, it diminishes. But with God, that doesn't happen. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's a He's all powerful. He's all knowing. So this this thing called worrying and uh, and feeling anxiety in life because we may be going through something is not a time for us to allow your the, input is invalid the, it is this is not a time to allow for our circumstances and our situation to overwhelm us to, to where we forget about the fact that we have a God that so loved us a father who so loved us that he said in order uh, to uh, to get with us, he had to be among us. And what am I saying? He incarnated himself and wrapped himself in flesh and came and dwell among men. And like all of us, He had needs. He had the same desire that we did. So when it comes to in this time, in this situation, with the pandemic, with our health, with the concern of uh, will I get COVID-19? And uh one young lady uh, put it on uh, uh, Facebook this, uh, last week that she don't know how she 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 received COVID. She said, "I really wasn't going nowhere. I basically stayed home. I was uh, I went out and got certain things." And she said, "Maybe I received it." because of people that may have come to my home. But thanks be to God, uh, she's out of the hospital. She's giving God the praise. She talked about some of the symptoms and things that she, that she had. But even in this pandemic, we cannot allow our worry of catching COVID-19 or our anxieties 
get so high that we cannot function. That we still will refuse to live. There's one scripture uh, that talks about uh, saving our lives and losing it. We cannot become so self-conscious of safety that we stop living. If you will, if you will, if you're still able to go to work, the means and the methods of going to work, you still need to go to work. You still need to eat. So you still need to provide there. We were going to church before uh, COVID and many of us were with the safety precautions. Uh, you still need, you know, life still goes on. So we can't get so consumed in the fact that I'm going to just lock myself in the house. I'm going to lock myself in my basement or in my uh, man cave, or my woman cave, that we stop living and we let the anxieties of the world overwhelm us and we're so scared we're going to catch something. Jesus equated anxiety and worry with little faith. We say that we have faith and the time now is to exercise our faith. I'm not saying do go and do nothing stupid, climb on top of a building and jump off, or go in the midst of folks and you don't have a mask, you stop wa washing your hands, you stop practicing uh, uh, cleanliness and health, but God put us here on earth for a reason. And he told us, if we will receive him as Lord and Savior, that he would be with us always, even, and beyond. So, so in life, worry, there's a difference between worry and being concerned. And that difference is worry will immobilize, immobilize us. We'll just stop. We'll give up. But concern and realizing that you still have a charge to keep and a God to serve, you still have to do the basics. You still have to exercise your faith and somebody needs that 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 may be panicking now that you know of every time you talk to them oh this i i mm, i think you got a little cough or my, my nose is is running or or i oh i ain't never ate and they're saying all these are symptoms of uh possible covid but 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 so many people have it and may not even know. It's just like cancer and anything else. You you can't you can't stop living. You can't you can't just throw in the the towel. What if your breakthrough was the next day? But you, you decided to do something, well, I can't take no more. And your worry and your depression took you out way quicker than COVID or any other of these other diseases. And you had a massive heart attack. There's a young man uh, I found out last week uh, that uh, he's a radio personality. He had recently found out that he had diabetes, fairly young man. Uh, he didn't show up for work. 
So they did a wellness check. They found him slumped uh, in his bathtub. Uh, I haven't heard, you know, what happened. It could have been a massive heart attack uh, or whatever. But, but life was already full of diseases, health issues, heart attack, diabetes, before this ever uh, came about. And death was already here. So we can't run from it. We can't hide from it. And like the lady, you know, and, and how you got it, unless God reveals or who you got it from, or even if uh, I went to the doctor today and, folk, and before they, they state that, uh, well, we don't give the COVID-19 test here today. But before you sign in, uh, read this. If you had this, this, or that in the last uh, 21 days, or this has happened, or if you had the test done, in essence, they are saying, uh, don't bother about signing in, or we will uh, have to get with the doctor or somebody and see if we can see you today. So death, as, as, uh, as uh, uh, Brother William said, know where you live. He know your name. He know your address. And all of us have appointed time. And all of us have uh, so much time. We don't know what it is, but, but the, night, the day or the hour, but the the, the 90th number of the Psalms, verse 12, says, Lord, teach us to ply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Because uh, most of us, the Lord has have, have allowed us to live uh, well into our 60s, 70s, and 40s, and 50s. But if you go to the Genesis, the fifth chapter, you will find that people were living way longer than we are today. Some people ate 900 years, 500, 400 years. And it seems now that the average age, when Moses wrote this 90th Psalm, it had came to be about 70 years. And for those who are, who, who are yet to get 70, that's the average. And for those who are over uh, the age of 70, that's grace as well. So, so in our worrying and, and in our uh, getting anxiety to where uh, we have an anxiety attacks. We can't function. He says in the 28th verse, And why take ye thought for raiments, considering the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they toil not, neither do they spin. And he says, Yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. If any of us go to the doctor today, tomorrow, and we get some bad news in our mind, according to human nature, that may take us out. That, that may say we have six months, three weeks, a year left. What should we do? Should we give up on life? Should we give, should, should we just throw, um, should we just throw in the towel? I have a, uh, uh, someone says, 
God gave us five senses and free will. When you know that you are So, now, and what we're talking about, and my mother and I used to often get into a discussion about the senses, where the Lord gave me five senses. Uh, and, you, and the person says, and when you, your five senses and you have free will, and when you know that you have a high, you're a high risk person, you need to uh, adhere to medical information that we are given to protect. I agree with that wholeheartedly, but you still have to live. And if you are, if you are a Christian, that was a question asked once over a coin. Is it right to obey Caesar or God. And Caesar's picture was on the coin. And it says, render unto Caesar, which is Caesar, and unto God, which is God. And when we <clears throat> when we talk, when we talk biblically, we tonight we, we are talking about a faith walk, and we're talking about trusting God. I'm not, uh, we're not saying don't you, don't, 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 don't use your five senses if you smell gas. If you, if, if, if you sense danger in the natural. And if you sense it in the natural, it should register on the inside. But when we deal with the word and scripture, we're dealing with a faith walk. And Jesus equates worry and anxiety over the things of life, which we can't do, un we can't do anything worrying about the coronavirus. We can't stop it. I used to be 5'8". And I and I hear now the older you get, uh, you normally shrink. So I've lost an inch. I've lost one inch because I used to love. Well, I'm five eight and a half, and so forth. And if that's the case, I've 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 lost an inch and a half. So Jesus is saying by worrying about it, by 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 getting twisted up and not that you get your nerves and you end up with ulcers and, and all kind of side uh, ill health effect. What have you done by worrying about it? What have you, what, what have you accomplished by not still living? If you need to go to the doctor, you need to go to the doctor. If you need to go out if you don't have anybody else to pick up food for you or go places, then you have to do that. But then, and I know we go up in the store, somebody may not have a mask, and then we, you know, we wonder if we should say something to them. If we say something to them, they might go off. But, but, the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. So either we're going to walk by faith or we're going to walk in fear. And the scripture says either God through faith is going to be our master or the things that we see, which are temporary, which are food, which are clothing, which are shelter. And we can't see Corona. We know it's there. There's all type of information out there. 
But if we get, if, if it's destined for us to get it, no matter what we do, when sometimes they say it's in the air, it's airborne. So how did, how did it get from China over here? So we go out. Ninety-nine percent of the people, even though they may have been around people, they don't really know where they had they 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 uh, picked it up from. They may have an idea. So even when before Corona came up, we went to the doctor and they told us we had a a tumor on the brain or we had cancer, or we had this, or this is going on with us. For those who have went through this, you, you haven't stopped living. And so Corona is no different than whatever else going to take us out. Now, some of us who don't have any issues, and if that's the case with all of the symptoms, when at least, I know I have at least seven things that sh should say I should get it. But we can't, we, 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 we can't isolate ourselves. Well, I'm afraid to go outside. I'm afraid to touch this. Well, I, knew, I know I used to go, you know, visit so-and-so. I used to go to church. I used to go by the farmer's market. I used to do this. Life goes on. And so if something would happen to any one of our children, of our loved ones, and we needed to get to them, and if it was possible, forget Corona. I'm going to see about my child, my mother. So, what we are saying and what Jesus is saying to us is, since we can't do anything about 99 and 9 tenths of the things, that we can here on earth get to worrying about. Our hope and our trust must remain in him. I remember going to Georgia one time and uh, years ago and I came across the medium in that 62 Chevy 2, uh, I was so fond of not knowing that the bottom of the gas tank had hit, uh, had hit uh, a brick uh, easement. And the gas needle had went out. And the place I was looking for in Atlanta, I was right at it. But I stopped and I asked the cab where was the Atlantic Hotel. He took me way out to some place. And the, and the motel I was looking for the person at was right in the heart of town. So he took me way out there. I, I'm not knowing that uh, this gas needle is broken. I said, um, when he showed me the place, I said, oh, no, that's, that's too fine a place for that person to be in. So I ended up back where I was originally, and I ran out of gas. I had to walk some 16 blocks or so to get some gas, and it's dark, it's at night. Didn't have but a little money. I had put all... I, I had put all the, I got what gas I could, and then I got 
uh, some more gas, but I didn't know where the needle was. The, the car was not full. So only thing I did was pray and pray till I got home. I prayed. And the Lord allowed the car and enough gas for the car to pull up at 4209 Gasson Avenue. And then it ran out of gas. So regardless of what's happening or what's going on in life, our prayer and our communion with God is still the most important. And he says in the 30th verse, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So, so what, what Jesus equates worrying and anxiety with is little faith or weak faith. And so what, what I'm saying here is just as well as I said earlier, uh, if, you, if you are a minister today, And uh, you are called by a member or you're a pastor. You call and say so-and-so is sick. And the expectation is that the minister or the pastor or the, that the person will respond when they hear so-and-so is sick. So, so what should the pastor or the minister do using faith or using his five senses do. A lot of funerals are taking place. You ask the pastor to do a funeral or you ask a certain minister to do a funeral. What should, what should the minister do? Say, no, I, I can't do it. You know this corona bad out here. Or I can't, I can't come to see you if, if, if it's permitted to come see you. Even if it's that midnight call or that 3 a.m. call in the morning that there's been an accident and you call your cousin, your pastor, your best friend. What are you going to do? You going to stay in the house and say, well, no, I ain't going and you don't got to call. The natural instinct, irregardless of, of, of using faith, is that you're going to go see about it if you call upon it. Now, if you use your five senses or you, you're so fearful or you're so frightened of, of the corona, maybe you'll stay at home and say, I'll let so-and-so call me and tell me what happened. But the expectation is if you get a call or you ask to do something uh, from a spiritual or, uh, or or from a, or from a uh, um, act of kindness or being gracious, uh, you gonna you gonna go do it nine times out of ten. So we cannot, you know, uh, 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 wall ourselves regardless of what's going on in the world. And, 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 and as what we have just read, 
it depends on where our commitment is. Whether it be inwardly, which is spiritual, which deals with faith, which deals with confidence and trust in God. And you do all of those things. You do all of those things. Who under normal circumstance will go out of your house without locking your door? Who will go out of the house without getting your keys? Who will go pick up something without washing your hands nowadays? Or if you touch a doorknob. Those are normal, instinctive things that you would do. But then there's still a greater service, a greater call, that if you are in transition between uh, one of these places that you need to go and then there's an accident or something happened, uh, if you are the victim of an accident and you need attention, are you going to tell someone that may come to your aid or, 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 or assistance, uh, thou don't touch me, you might have, you know, this or that. You might give me this. So either, e either, e either we trust God to pe put people in our lives when we are in need that can help us. As it was said one, one time, there was a man that rode by the, the crazy house in his car and his wheel came off. And he didn't know what he was going to do. And, the, and the, the lug nuts flew off. He didn't know where they went. So the guy that was behind the fence that supposed to have these emotional and these adjustment issues said to him, hollering through the fence, said, well, why don't you take, uh, put the tire back on, take one lug nut from the remaining three tires and put it on there and see if that'll get you where you need to go. So late on, the moral of the story was, Maybe the wrong fellow was behind the fence when it came to adjustment and figuring out things. So, you know, uh, uh, Sunday before last, after I preached a sermon about who is my neighbor, that was a call to the church. I didn't originally answer the number, but later on I called it back. And there was a young man on the phone saying that my grandmother had died the week before. My wife of seven years done left me and I don't want to be homeless. So what do you do? What do you do? Monday, met an individual who needed some help. So what do you do? Uh, well, I, you know, I don't know where you've been or, or who you've been around or what you might have or no, don't have. So what do you do? Say, well, you uh, Let's wait till this pass over before, you know, we can, we can help. Or do you say, I tell you what, we'll, you know, we'll leave whatever in the mailbox. You come by and pick it up without socializing or interacting with the person. And so, so these are all challenges that we have every day. You know, even before Corona, when we go to visit certain people in the hospital, there were certain precautions. 
in some things. Sometimes you may have had to put on gloves or a mask or an apron or even the uh, you couldn't go in the room. So we all make adjustments. And what Jesus is saying in our making the adjustment, we cannot let fear become the master. We cannot let anxiety or worry be, uh, drive and dictate uh, how we will respond and help steal one another. For the scripture says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us power and love and a sound mind. And so along with that, the same way we have been taught that when we eat, we say grace. When we interact and engage with people, we still have to pray. We should still pray and seek God in faith that he's still going to do what he says. So as, 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 we, as we wrap up and get close uh, to the hour mark, worrying and anxiety uh, is, dis is disruptive and it disrupts our production. It damages our health. It, it causes objects of our worry to consume our thoughts and negatively affects the way, it could negatively affect the way we treat one another. Well, you know, I don't want to be bothered. Don't call me. I'll call you when this when this pandemic is over. And all of that, that isolation and so forth, uh, I was concerned about how the school is going to pull this off by saying kids come on back to school. The school is, is made for interaction. And you have to think about the staff, the teachers, as well as the students. And children don't uh, they just not wired that way. They have to be interact with each other. And children don't even have to know each other. They just automatically connect. They may stare at one another, uh, sizing each other up and figuring out, but before it's over, they are there playing, regardless of what your color, what, what you look like, or whatever disease you may have. And, and also... Worrying and anxiety can reduce our ability to trust in God because our minds, our thought, and 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 is so much on God, or uh, so much on the things that we see and are consumed with. We may stop praying. We may stop seeking God. We allow fear to take over. So how many ill effects or worry are we experiencing now? It could be financial. It could be physically. It could be spiritually. It could be over children. It could be even over spouses. It could even be just ourselves. Some of us are just worriers. And some of us, uh, uh, it looks like it appears we don't care. You know, I, I when when I receive uh, uh, the information uh, that I had a health issue, which men get, I didn't really I didn't really realize that black men suffer with it that much. I didn't say a whole lot. I did pray. And it may have appeared that I was in a daze or a shock. 
But I remember telling the doctor that I'm a man of faith. And regardless the way uh, of what my face looked like or what my countenance looked like, I wasn't stressing over it on the inside that it could twist, you know, my mind, my nerves. I've had a pep peptic ulcer. So even to, to know what the effects of, of, of other ulcers can do from what people have said that can cause bleeding and, and whatever else. So the stress of being too concerned with the temporal affairs. Now, anybody walking around, if you're having health issues or money issues, there is a concern. And the concern should move you to action. That's the difference between worrying and anxiety and being concerned. Worrying and anxiety will, will stop you, will immobilize you will make you throw up your hand, will make even drive you to the point of committing suicide or attempting to do it. But concern will move us into action as, as uh, our sister says of using your five senses and, and trusting God. And, um, but even with your senses, you can be deceived. So we need the inner workings of faith. We need the Holy Spirit working in us and us listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so it says, worrying does immobilize. So what actions, so what actions should concern mobilize us into as it relates to health. Uh, uh, people are dying every day. Uh, do we do we go to no funerals? Do we uh, do we pick the funerals we go to? Some people are still getting married. Do we do we cease going to to weddings? Or do we pick the weddings we go to? Well, if, if it's my daughter or my son, most of us, okay. Well, I don't, you know, I wish you would wait, maybe. But if they say this today, how many of us would choose to sit at home? Or how many of us would go? How many, if the opportunity was given to go in the hospital to see a loved one? So, whatever we do, the food we eat, we bless it and, and pray that it's, uh, it's nourishment, it's fulfilling, and it won't do any harm. But I looked up today that uh, this certain 50-50 mix that the uh, 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 the new store ALDI and some other they they found uh, uh, some uh, parasites in the uh, in the lettuce mix, and some people they found salmonella and and various things in it, and so we certain situations. It has made people sick. So we don't stop eating. We don't stop seeking the basic needs. And God has said, I'm going to supply your need. And, 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 and your health is a need. You need help. Now, Paul, whatever Paul had, Paul asked God three times to remove what his thorn in the flesh was. And God told him, my grace is sufficient. God could remove every ill, disease, infirmity, 
every harmful thing out of the world if he wanted to today. He could do it. But he says, my grace is sufficient. Even though you get weak from it, you may die from it. You may get so sick that you are at the point of, but he's still saying, my grace is sufficient, whatever you go through. So he's saying here that anxiety is the inability to deal with uncertainty. And certainly this pandemic is an uncertainty. And the desire, we always want to be where we can control the inputs and the outputs of things. But this pandemic, the only control we have, we think, well, I'll stay in. I won't go around nobody. And it can still walk in your door. It can still walk up to your front door. Because the body, things can lay around in our body dormant. And 20, 30, 50 years later, it pops up. It manifests itself. Just like the goodness and the grace of God. All these years that we resist him. And it was interesting last week that the doctor called me, uh, his, uh, his receptionist, and said, are you planning on coming uh, to the doctor today? Uh, yes, I have an appointment. I, I have planned. Now I'm wondering what uh what would have happened if I said no? Oh, you would have been just comfortable uh with me not showing up. Maybe they would have asked me, well, when can you come in? Maybe they would have. And so um our anxiety and our desire for safety can make us afraid of failure or of the consequences of failure should we take a leap of faith. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging us, regardless of what happens, God is still expecting the believer and the Christian to operate in faith. And I'm not telling you to run out there in front of a car or a train or run, in, uh, run up into a hospital and, and holler out no weapon formed against me shall prosper the Lord. I'm not telling you to do that. But you st we still have to have the faith and the confidence and the trust in God that no matter what happens, I'm going to trust you even if it takes me out. Because this is not our home, no way. If we wanted to, we couldn't stay here forever. We won't stay here forever. So it behooves us to get our business and our affairs straight. That whenever that day comes, that we can be taken out of this world of anxiety and fear. And the only permanent thing that we have been discussing is God. Is our trust in him. That's the only permanent thing. It says now we see darkly through a glass. But one of these days, that barrier is going to be removed. And we're going to see him as he truly is. We're going to see him in all of his glory. And we won't have to worry about the infirmities and the diseases of this world. So we're going to start right there in next week. Uh, we're going to start the seventh chapter. And uh, we encourage as many of you, if uh, your church is not having service, if you will join us Sunday via uh, the... Uh, Facebook or phone, phone conference or come and worship with us at 
1030 at 3645 Norma Bridge Road. And it says here, Self Gotten wrote, Anxiety is experiencing failure in advance. If we will let worry and anxiety overtake us and become our master and dictate our going in and coming out, it's experiencing failure before we ever begin. Are there any questions or comments? We pray something has been said that'll lift you and encourage you. The The point is not to uh, uh, disparage or make you feel uh, uh, down because of the choices you make, but the point is that God is still in control. He's in charge. He still controls everything. And whatever you need for him, from him, he's able to do it. If three boys can go in a fiery furnace that was heated up seven times harder than it was, if many of us who have been in the hospital, who have gunshot wounds, who have cuts, who have been wounded with the, the scars of life, physically, mentally, as well as spiritually, the same God still has the power. Because we are, we are overcomers of everything we face in life. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal and all wise God, we thank you for another opportunity to share your word for you to provide revelation, knowledge, and understanding. And we pray, Father, that uh, revelation would take place because the your word says the foolishness of man worketh not the righteousness of God. We pray that we would seek your face and seek your spirit, that we may know what the spirit has to say to the church, which is the individuals who make up the body of Christ. We pray now and we plead the blood of Jesus over every household, over your health, your mind, your soul, your body, and your spirit, over your finances, over your children, over your children's children, your neighbor, your neighborhood, your community, your city, your state, your, and the world thereof, we plead the blood of Jesus. We pray that his healing virtue will be upon you. But most of all, we pray that his miracle wholeness be upon you, that you will be as the leopard that was healed, that you would be as the dead man, as Lazarus that he called back from the dead. After four days of stink, stinking, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to those dead situations, those dead thoughts in our life, and we speak life that life which passes all understanding. These and all other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. We pray that thou would keep us until we meet again. To the all-wise God, our Lord and Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and evermore. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Thank, thank all of you. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.